The views of this program are not necessarily those of KWFM, its management, or its sponsors. The host is solely responsible for the content. Um, our guests today are uh, Arnie Gunderson from an organization called Fairwinds and Russell Lowe's, who's uh, I find, uh, done a lot of financial analyst work around um, the monetary parts of nuclear power. And Mr. Gunderson has also done uh, significant work in America, uh, uh, probably not just in America, given his background, uh, on safety issues around nuclear power. Um, Andrea Witte from Connecting the Dots may show up momentarily. Um, we thought it was important to talk about, to bring up nuclear power, given uh, the events at Fukushima in Japan and um, how that might change uh, the tenor and context of the conversation, not only globally but, but in America, um, bringing forward a lot of issues that seem to be routinely suppressed, stun, uh, spun, or distorted uh, so that people uh, don't have a complete understanding of what's wrong with the financing, what's wrong with the safety. But then when it, it, it appears that this plant that they've been proposing and carrying forward in Georgia was moving forward as though Fukushima never happened. I thought, my God, how can this be? Let's have a conversation about this. Let's understand this. Let's get our arms around it. And so uh, Russell and Mr. Gunderson have been good enough uh, to come on the show with us and um, see see where how we can push this down the road. Uh, our call in number is 529 3508. That's 529 3508. Mr. Gunderson, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Welcome. And and thank you for very I mean this very heartfelt. Thank you very much for um your good work. Um uh, simply put, but not not simply done. And Russell yourself as well. Thank, thank you, you and welcome. Well, f well guys, um what's your take did you have it's not, it's not like I'm Pollyanna. I mean, I've had a ringside seat at the abyss for 30 years. But I still had some uh, hope that, given what happened at Fukushima, that uh, there would be some pause, maybe enough scales falling from the eyes so that some critical mass of judgment might occur to start changing some of these issues around safety and financing. Did you know? Did you guys at all have any any of those thoughts, or you're smart? You're, you're way smarter than me. Well, I, I I personally had thoughts that that America might slow down a little bit, but but not much hope for that. But what has been real help, hopeful and actually very productive is Germany has has right. said that they will shut down all of the rest of their nuclear plants, and they shut down a handful right after Fukushima occurred. And and now they're phasing out all the rest of them. Italy has resoundingly gone against their chief of state. I didn't and, know they and, did that. So they Italy vote. said, uh -huh. yeah, they they are stopping any any nuclear development. Brazil has has put everything on hold. Uh, so there are countries around the world that are doing this. There are nine countries in Europe that are not, are not nuclear powers that are are asking for a full cessation of nuclear power development in Europe. So so, so. now Brazil, I'm trying to think what do Brazil and Germany have in common? They're far more energy independent than other countries like um uh what what Brazil does with fuel and then Germany to their credit has done so much in solar production. Well, Germany's becoming ind energy independent. independent and they, That's a relative term. Yeah, they just reached, they are occasionally reaching 20% of uh, their total energy output with solar at, at one instant. Right. But, but not 20% of total energy for the, for the day or right. the year. But that, uh, has to, it, ha that has to influence the probabilities on how decisions get made. Yes, um, but Arnie, how how do you feel that uh, the U.S. has reacted in this whole thing? Well, when I saw Fukushima uh, happen, I, I told my wife, "I am I am personally not going to let this get covered up like right. the island and like Chernobyl. I'm just not going to do it." So we, at, at the at the expense of our of our business, of Fairrun's business, um, now we've just dedicated the last year to. Jeez. 
keeping public attention on this thing. If if uh, if we had relied on the mainstream media, we would you know we would think that uh, uh, nuclear is absolutely right. safe. So uh, you know, I I guess I wasn't that we would try to cover this thing up, and um, I guess that um, you know my my um, but but like Russ said, I I think uh, some countries the message and. The one that's on the fence is Japan. You know, they're Amazing. trying to start two nukes up out of um, perhaps 40 uh, of their 50. They had 54. They, they lost four in the uh, in the accident at, at uh, Daiichi, one, two, three, four. They likely lost five and six. But then there's another um, about 10 that are certainly in jeopardy from the, the tsunami and also from the... Uh, uh, seismic issues. So perhaps Japan is down to 40 nuclear plants, um, and, and they had seven million people write to um, write Good to Congress, write to the Diet, saying we don't want to do this. Uh, so I'm hopeful My for God. Japan, even though the um, uh, the government doesn't seem to get the message yet. Well, didn't uh, Tokyo Electric? They're sort of metering out what the costs are. And uh, it's part of how they're doing this cover-up. Instead of saying it might be five hundred billion to clean it up, it, they're saying, "Oh, it's going to be thirty, and next week it's thirty-three." And they're uh, they're really misrepresenting stuff. Yeah, you know that it's it's death by a by a thousand <laughs> right. uh, words as opposed to they they if they were to admit to the people oh. that this is a half a trillion dollar problem. Uh, they would have uh, rebellion on their hands. So it's better every three months to say, "Oh, it's uh, you know another twenty billion here and another twenty billion there." So that they but, got seven million letters, and people didn't know the whole story. My God, I mean, what's that the equivalent of in, the, in terms of the U.S. population? What is the what is the Japanese population? Um, One hundred and forty million. So one hundred and forty million. More than twice, so it would be the equivalent of, of these are not emails; these were hand signatures. My on, God, on documents. that's like fifteen million letters. 14, yeah. Fourteen to wow. twenty million letters wow. being delivered to Congress. Yeah, we've never had that in no. the United States. We've never had that kind of participation, uh, protest, or any otherwise for any particular mm -hmm. issue, even for our national parks mm -hmm. or for for anti-war or anything like that. Yeah, aren't uh, well. Well, let me ask a question, but then we're probably going to, go to have to go to break here for a minute, Arnie. Uh, in terms of the design of this facility at Fukushima and, and what it has in common with U.S. facilities, isn't, there a, a, isn't this a, the, one of the original designs where they stored the spent rods in a tower in the air? Um, and they don't even ha they don't have a clue on how to remove it from the water because one, it bursts into flames when you remove it, and then um, it, then it becomes atmospheric. Yes, uh, all four of the units that are in trouble, and twenty three similar ones in the United States. And Tw wait, there's twenty three in the United States that are this design. Yes, that's correct. Wow. Now I, I've been told that the uh, there might be. Uh, I, I, I forget, I, I'm losing whether it's pounds or tons, but suffice it to say the amount of waste, nuclear waste in these towers in Japan is 25% of the volume that these towers at the, at the 23 plants that are built like it in America have inside them. There's four times more in the, oh, in yeah. the, in the U.S. plants. The Japanese were relatively conscientious, and they got most of the fuel out of their spent fuel pools. But the um, um, but the Americans keep their fuel fuel pools full, and the reason is money. It it costs um, a lot of money to empty the I fuel see. pool, and of course um, they don't uh, want to spend it because they want to protect the ratepayers. No, they want to protect the bottom line. Yeah, Arnie, we've got to go to break here. We'll be back in just a second. Five two nine thirty five zero eight. Okay, we are back. Our guests are Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds uh, Research Group and Russell Lowe's, who does uh, financial analysis around uh, nuclear power plants, and Andrea Whitty from Connecting the Dados has just joined us. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking about the design of uh, Fukushima 
and that there's 23 plants in the United States that are built with basically the same blueprints. And the, the tower where they store the waste in these is, is, is a tower in the air, not made out of hardened concrete. Planes could fly into it. And they as yet have developed no way to remove the stuff from these towers uh, to put in some quote-unquote happy fantasy idea of a permanent location. And they keep in Fukushima, so, well, we'll, uh, we'll be ready in four years. Well, you have, don't have an idea. Don't you talk about four years? Yeah? Now, Mr. Gunderson just said that the plants in the United States, while the same design, that their towers, where the stuff is stored, hold 400% more volume than the ones in Japan. So that was our jumping off point. Um, you know, when the, when the pools are intact, you can remove the nuclear fuel. You do it all underwater and you put it into a very heavy shielded cask, and then it goes to something called dry cask storage. Fukushima had dry cask storage, and all the dry casks survived the earthquake and the tsunami. Mm-hmm. But in the U.S., we're not doing that. We're uh. keeping all the fuel in the pool. <laughs> which is uh, an enormous public health risk. Now, so there, how, there long, some how, how many years' worth of fuel are stored in those since the, well, the pl- we they were have, built? In, in uh, Vermont here, the, the, the pool is solid. Uh, we've got 33 years there. They, they couldn't oh my fill it God. anymore, so they had to take some out. Mm-hmm. So we have some in dry cask, but still the fuel pool is full. And, and the reason is that Entergy, the owner of the plant, it, it, it's not coming out of ratepayers. These guys are a merchant plant. They just make money on selling it into the grid. If they were to empty the pool, it would come out of their pocket, and they'd wind up with oh, easily a hundred million dollar hit. But if they wait until the plant is decommissioned, that's just what I wanted to get at. Right. Ah. Uh, right. If they wait until the plant is shut down for good, then it comes out of the decommissioning fund. Oh my and, God. And it, another party pays for it. So, you know, back to the, 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 the corporate scheme modus operandi of externalizing your overhead. Not only do they want profits, which are, well, profits are okay, but it's the way they maximize their profits by externalizing their overhead. I mean, the, the plant in Georgia and many of these other plants, if something goes wrong, the taxpayers pay for it. These guys aren't liable or... Uh, responsible financially for the consequences of their decisions. And so, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, they want to build a hotel in downtown Tucson, but when you read the contract and you see that, oh, no, they want the taxpayers to be responsible if the room night occupancy isn't enough. And same thing with the happy fantasy for the arena. You read the contract and, oh, it's the taxpayers who are on the hook. So this is like modus operandi trick number three, that no matter what the industry, these guys try and put on the American population. Well, on top of that, in the N- Nuclear Regulatory Commission has allowed a number of nuclear reactors to be, to be spun off into LLCs, or limited liability companies. And if those companies go under, which is very likely, the taxpayer will be footing the bill for the vast majority of the decommissioning of these plants. And we're talking like a billion dollars per reactor or more. So uh, this is a, this LLC thing is just a streamlined way it's a, to create the it's, externalization of the, of the cost? It's a shell game. It's a shell game. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and so, it, so you would think we'd be slowing down. That was your original yeah. like, hypothesis right. you know, that you presented at the beginning of the program. Uh, but instead, we're promoting, more adi- we're pr- 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 promoting additional reactors. We have the Vogel plants. Uh, we, have, we have other plants that are being planned. And the Vogel plant uh, just recently got a loan fee offered to it by the DOE, the Department of Energy, for 0.2% to 0.63%, somewhere in there. So when you go to buy a car, or when you go to buy a house, or, a student or loan. you get a student loan, you pay a couple points or a few points on that loan, at least one point. The, this, this massive plant, which the Congressional Budget Office has said has a 50% chance of default or higher, uh, uh, is getting a 
a loan fee of point two to you couldn't get a loan on a house if they thought you were there was a fifty percent chance you couldn't make the payments. No, well that's what the but see the GAO Russell. I think also. these guys are getting screwed. That's not mm-hmm. fair. Mm-hmm. Oh, they could have gone to the Federal Reserve and gotten it for nothing. <laughs> they're, well, I, they're, they're making them pay something. I don't even believe that. That is ultimately their plan. Their their ultimate plan is to get uh, the U.S. government to become socialized enough. While they decry socialism, they are getting the U.S. government to become socialized enough to be able to fund these plants completely out of taxpayers' pockets. Well, wait a minute. This is a strange... Speaking of hybrid reactors, so these guys are are socialists in the back door and capitalists in the front door. They want to say, we're capitalists, we're smart guys, we take risks, we make hard... We build things, and yet... We don't want to be connected with the consequences. We don't have enough faith in our own judgment and ability and efforts to even stand by the crap we build. We want, we want to leave it on your doorstep. So, Arnie, what would now happen a, if, one now, of, if one of these plants went down? Like, what would happen if we meant Yankee or, say, Palo Verde in Arizona, a three-unit re, three reactor system went down with, with say, a plane hit? To the cooling tower rooms. Oh, or, or Palo Verde's to, I'm, a little different. I'm sorry, different. to the uh, to the spent fuel pond r- r- rooms. Yeah, Palo Verde's a little different, but the Vermont Yankee. Um, uh, there's actually been a study uh, by by Brookhaven National Laboratory. Certainly not a hotbed of nuclear anti nuclear activity. No. <laughs> um, but anyway, Brookhaven said that if the uh, fuel pool were to drain, you'd have a fire, and that's for sure. And the fire would release as much radiation as uh, Every nuclear weapon that's ever been exploded in the atmosphere. Oh my and, God! Uh, mm. And it would cause the permanent evacuation of a 40-mile radius circle, and it would cause uh, in excess of 100 million uh, cancers, 100,000 cancers. Rather, I'm sorry. So it's uh, and and yet the NRC does not move the fuel out of the pools. Now here's their argument: the NRC is making. Well, if we move the fuel out of the pool, the workers are going to be more exposed. And so, therefore, we have to take into account worker exposure as we're moving the fuel. God, that's, a, that's, that's the a first time they've target. ever cared about workers. Well, that's exactly Jesus. right. Jesus. Because when these plants were um, um, older, younger, uh, it used to take 90 days to move the fuel. And now utilities have gotten it down to where they can move it in 15, which increases worker exposure. Right. So right. where was the NRC when we were shuffling fuel fast? They were on the sidelines. But now that we want to move the fuel down and protect the public, the NRC is saying, oh, we've got to worry about worker exposures. You know, Mr. Gunderson, just for my own edification, um, in terms of the history of nuclear power, uh, someone said to me that um, the reason it came into, an exi- into existence was to solve a problem that the, de- that the Pentagon of the Defense Department had around uh, weapons production. And so if that's the case, we're sort of stumbling and not recovering our balance where we're making a set of bad decisions to solve a bad decision and then you know do this other set of bad decisions so if it wasn't really needed for power but they they sold it that way but they're really solving a problem for the weapons industry as as how to deal with a byproduct and now there there's all these you know how do you deal with the fuel rods so we're it's like band-aid over band-aid over band-aid it, no, I think you're right. They, the, um, we would not be using enriched uranium nuclear power plants were it not for the bomb program. Wow. Maybe that's, so that's true. Yeah. Maybe scientists uh, would have come up with a different design. But the design we have is driven because we had a bomb program. Wow. That's very wow. true. Um, and then, so if we were to have, say, some kind of problem like you were referring to, Arnie, with the Vermont plant, or say Palo Verde, perhaps, what what would be the damages? How long would that area be, you know, off limits? At least three hundred and possibly thousands of years. Um, it's it's an extraordinarily long amount of time, uh, because what happens when you have a fuel pool fire is hmm. you not only volatilize the cesium, which is a, a muscle seeker and, and and a bad actor, but you also volatilize the plutonium and Plutonium, named after Pluto, the god of hell, is is uh, is the nastiest element uh, out there. Um, can, can I? T- 
touch on one thing. We were talking about socializing risk and... and uh, Certainly. Now, Arnie, no, we've got to go to break here in a minute, so uh, if it's a big one, we'll, we'll, we're going to have to finish it uh, in, in, the, in the next quarter when we come back. So launch into it, but no, we might have to stop you. Okay. Um, Florida is planning four new nukes. They will add 9% to the capacity of the grid, but they will double the capital cost of all of the power plants in the state. What's that going to mean? That means that Floridians are going to pay double their electric rate. Now, we all know that won't happen, so what will happen is that the loan guarantees that these plants are going to be built under are going to shift that risk uh, you know, to Arizona or up to Vermont so that the Floridians don't have to pay the high electric for the plants that they're about to buy. You mean they're going to socialize the cost into the larger pool of the entire U.S. population as opposed to just the population of Florida? That's right. All right. We're going to break. We'll be back in a minute. 529-3508. Okay, we are back. Talking about nuclear power, scales falling from our eyes, scales on the pipes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Gunderson was talking about uh, externalizing both financial risks and also harm. Uh, Mr. Gunderson, wasn't there a, a, a one or maybe even two locations in Southern California where there were plants that were shut down that have really never been, uh, not never been, but hardly ever talked about where there's uh, high cancer rates that have been going on for generations? Well, the, the first major nuclear accident in the country was at uh, Santa Susana, which is outside of L.A. So everybody that, thinks it was Three Mile Island, but that's not the case. Uh, it was worse than Three Mile Island. Worse than Three Mile Island? The government covered it up for 20 or 30 years. Wow. The, um, it, was a, it was a research reactor, and uh, the ground is still contaminated to this day. Um, and there's all sorts of associated cancers. Uh, scientists are just now beginning to realize how serious that accident was. What year? Um, what year did that happen? Russ, you remember for sure? Uh, I think it was I '59. Think, yeah, it was the late '50s. I know, but I, yeah, '59 is a good guess. It was about 40 miles outside of L.A., and of course, back then, yeah, it was um, you know it was it was shrubs and it was boonies. Many, uh, but mm -hmm. of course, as people have moved in, no one's told them the soil is contaminated. And um, and there are some meaningful. Uh, you mean it wasn't on the listing? No. No, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Crap, Isn't Arnie. Disclosure. <laughs> so that that reactor, we've had a whole slew of mishaps too. I mean, we we've had a reactor in in uh, Ohio that. Um, the reactor vessel is 12 inches thick steel of, of stainless steel right and and one there was a boric acid problem in one of the reactors in Ohio that came down to three sixteenths of an inch thick and they said if that plant had gone on for six more months of operation they probably would have had a full-scale meltdown now you make me think of uh, something that was going on at San Onofre where they can you talk about how they remodel San Onofre, Arnie? Uh, there's a um, uh, Farron's just put up a report an hour ago, uh, and Associated Press and some of the others are covering it today. Um, what happened was the San Onofre steam generators were uh, about 30 years old and uh, needed to be replaced. So uh, they went out and, um, uh, and 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 replaced them. And this is used to be a matter of relative routine, except mm -hmm. that uh, the, the, the folks at uh, Southern California Edison really juiced this one up and added more tubes and took out structural supports, etc. So let, let, me, let me say this a little bit differently for our listeners. They um, took out the, when they took out the structural stuff, it weakened the safety in the design, but they wanted to do that to add more tubes so they could have more power, sell more electricity, and make more money. That's exactly right. And so... What, and what happened was... Who the, approved that? It was stunning to me is that somebody other than an employee of that company had to approve that design. And even to an untutored person, that uh, flaw in the thinking in that design had to be evident. No one. And so, can you talk about were there objections raised? Did they? Who did people understand this going into this? 
Um, they, that's a great question. It, they, they made a strategic decision that they wouldn't tell the NRC, and then they... W- wait a minute. The the, the PG, is this PG&E? <laughs> no, this is Southern California Edison. Oh. They, there's a thing called 5059, uh, and their first decision was, we're going to change the steam generators, and we're going to do it without amending the license. God, I can't and even then, build a tough shed without a permit. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> right, you got it. You got it. And so what happened was that they uh, all of the analysis after that supported the strategic decision at the beginning that they weren't going to approve the license. And uh, that happened in uh, 05, 06. Uh, well, in, uh, in, in 2011, one of the steam generators, well, no, just last, in, in 2012, rather, uh, a steam generator had just been run for 10 months, and it started to blow tubes. And we've just discovered today that... Uh, um, uh, over a hundred tubes were com- were half worn or more, and of course, what what the, the Fairwinds report that just came out today shows that um, all of the tubes that had to be plugged, there's 1,300 plugs that uh, had to be inserted in those two units. If you look at all the other nuclear reactors, they only needed 300 plugs. So San Onofre has four times more plugs than it than all the other nuclear reactors in the country. So if one of those tubes breaks, there's a, an immediate atmospheric release. Do I have that right? Yes. Actually, it happened once back in the 90s where one tube broke completely, and it released um, uh, 50,000 gallons of, of uh, nuclear reactor coolant to the, the side of the plant that's supposed to be clean. And the problem with San Onofre is it wouldn't stop at one tube. These things would cascade like popcorn popping. And there's 9,600 of them in each one? Yes. And you could easily have a couple hundred blow had there been, um, you know, a Good a, a grief. Tube, uh, yeah. Good yeah. grief. Russell? Arnie, uh, you've worked with the nuclear industry for 40 years. Uh, you ended up as a v- vice president of a nuclear company, and then you came to see that things weren't being implemented properly. But with what you're talking about today in Southern California, is this a deterioration of what the, you know, what used to be a better situation, or has it always been this way? Um, I, I actually think that at, at least... Um, no, it's always been this way. I, I think I can... I was kidding myself in the 70s and 80s when I was a senior VP. Mm-hmm. Good uh, man. In the 90s, when I blew the whistle, you know, the NRC deliberately botched the inspection of my concerns, and the NRC was taking bribes from my employer. Uh, it took Senator John Glenn in congressional hearings to exonerate me. And, Damn. and not every whistleblower can get to Senator no. John Glenn for congressional hearings, unfortunately. Right. And even then, though, Russ, you know, it convinced me that regulation was right. lax, but right. it didn't make me... Right. Um, it didn't turn me. I thought nuclear power was a good idea even then. Right. It was Fukushima that, that, that really flipped me completely over. We, and that's because we're talking about, the, the, to use Donald Rumsfeld, right. the unknown unknowns. Right. Mother Nature can always throw something at us that we didn't anticipate. They don't. They don't. They're too arrogant. There's too much hubris to take into consideration chaos theory. Mm-hmm. We've got a caller. Joe, are you still with us? Hey, I can't even tell you how great this discussion is, you guys. Um, I just want to chime in. This, I think this is a, a uh, another shining example of how we have, you know, we're in the information age, but yet the secrecy prevails. And just the political elites, you, just, you look at the failures. Left hey, they had right. to use the Freedom of Information yeah. Act to get information out of the Department of Justice to find out what the interest rate on the goddamn loan was. Well, there's <laughs> SACE, um, SACE.org, that's S-A-C-E dot org, they had to do a Freedom of Information Act uh, request just to be able to find out, yeah, as the you say, interest rate. What, what the origination fees were for a loan, as if that's a big proprietary secret that the taxpayers who are funding this shouldn't know. Well, it, but unfortunately it happens at the same time when student loans are higher than what they're charging these guys, so that as a backdrop starts to become, you know, a vivid oh damn. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, the whole this whole issue is so absurd to me because nuclear power is not economical to begin with. It, it for new nuclear power, you're talking twenty four cents a kilowatt hour of delivered electricity, and. 
energy efficiency is three cents a kilowatt hour, eight one eighth the cost right. of nuclear power. Photovoltaics now have gone below eighteen cents per kilowatt hour, and wind is down below twelve cents per kilowatt hour delivered. Right. And so the whole thing is just like it's unneeded. It it is really just a machine for re-election of people who support their agenda. Largely Republicans. I, hey, I remember uh, interviewing a, a friend of mine who years ago uh, was going to run for the U.S. Senate in Arizona, didn't like nuclear, went to Washington to talk to the DNC, came back and was a proponent of nuclear. I thought, what am I, watching the invasion of the body snatchers? I mean, this guy, what, they had some conversion and drank the Kool-Aid? It's like... They they had to have told. I mean, I know how this works. We will only support you if you support this. And Russell, so Russell's absolutely right. Well, we projected the cost of Palo Verde in 1978 for 86 completion, 1986 completion. We we projected 6.1 billion. The utilities projected 2.8. They use sales pitches. We use scientific regression analysis. Right. We ended up four percent off. They came in at 5.9 billion. We were 0.2 billion off. Really, really tightly close because we used right. objective scientific approach. Right. They know now that these plants are going to cost double of what they are saying. It's just how to get them built. Right. They know if they lowball the estimate, they can get them built. Right. Well, that's how private private insurance absolutely won't even touch us with a ten foot pole. No. All these conservatives, uh-uh. no, all no. These conservatives, these free market guys. Uh, you know, they put away that roaring lion of free market. Uh, you know, um, pull your bootstraps up, and they pull this mouse out. Uh, that you know, just it's just, there's there's nothing market related there. If no, it, if it couldn't survive on its yeah, own. No, it should, it should go by the wayside. Right. But suddenly these guys fall. It's just a way to steal island. money. Mm-hmm. It's free yeah. enterprise for the poor and and, mm-hmm. and socialism for the rich or socialism for the large right. companies that don't really need right. it. Right. It's a redistribution. No, it's bad enough. It's a redistribution of wealth, creating shrinking the middle class, creating more poverty, but it's also environmentally and biologically putting everybody at risk. I mean, talk about a death dance with destiny. <laughs> hey, th- yeah. thank you, Joe. We've got to, we've got to take a call from Mike. Michael, are you there? Taking my, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. Uh, great, great show to Joe's point. You know, it's nice hearing real news and real information for a change uh, you know, instead of this nonsense that we are permeated with every day. You know, my question is really a simple one. You know, how big of a bust needs to T-bone our society before we wake up, you know. We've known about the nukes. We've known about the, the risks. Uh, China Syn- Syndrome uh, movie way back in the 60s uh, elevated uh, the issue, and then all of a sudden it went away. You know, competing technologies are not only shunned, but ridiculed. You know, we know about the vaporized carburetors that are capable of, of putting out a 1,000 miles per gallon that exists, but they're they're uh, hidden away in some. Uh, they just need to someplace. propose building a nuclear power plant next to the White House, and let's see how quickly they start talking about safety. Well, and, and, and I, well, quickly, I'm in the energy field. I've been doing this for a long, long time. I, I'm I'm very familiar with competing technologies, and I've seen them uh, uh, come and go. You know, there's magnetic metallurgies that are 20 times more efficient. Uh, that can be used in, in the electric motors. Uh, you know, there's renewable hemp and bamboo that has a much higher energy property than soy or corn or some of the other things that we're getting ethanol from. You know, it, it is exactly what uh, Joe said, and, and we all, and you guys talked about, about the uh, privatization of profit and the socialization of, of debt. You know, uh, this thing is, unfortunately, uh, came to a point to where both parties, and, and this is a statistic that's interesting real quick, and that is both parties uh, say that only 4% of the electorate are well-informed. So that's why they're getting away with it, yeah. because we have not uh, done our part as citizens to become uh, engaged, right. and become educated, and therefore us driving the policy right. from the people up instead of where it is today. Right. 
But hey. thanks for the great work, and thanks for your show. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Michael. Arnie uh, and Russell, uh, we've got about uh, eight, eight or nine minutes left. In the remaining time, are there some issues you would like to get at and cover that uh, well, well, we haven't been able to get to so far? Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that Arizona passed what's called a Senate concurrent memorial. It basically just means a Senate endorsement. The House and the Senate passed this. It was a proposal by L. Melvin, Senator L. Melvin, to make Arizona the nuclear waste dump for the entire United States. We should call him Al Mel- Meltdown. Uh, well, <laughs> see, people call him Al- Atomic uh, Al. Too. Atomic Al? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's kind of the name okay. that goes around. But, um, so he's proposing uh, a whole slew of, of, of activities to occur. One would be that uh, okay. the Arizona well, would become a reprocessing center for the United States. Uh, we would be the breeder reactor fuel line for the entire United States. Breeder reactors have had $150 billion put into them over the years, and, and they have not produced a single year's worth of economic electricity. There have been 15 breeder reactors done all over the United States, France, Russia, and and the, we've gotten zero out of it, really. It's a, it's a pie-in-the-sky pipe dream. And, and that has not yielded anything. And he's, you know, Senator Melvin, with all due respect, has been putting out information that, that is like comic book sourced, essentially. Uh, he, he's, he has been saying that France does reprocessing and, and uses 95% of the fuel's value. Wait a it, minute. It's been shown in study after study that the, the most you can technically get out of this fuel is 1.6%. And that would be extremely expensive to do. If it was working mo- so great for France, they wouldn't be dumping it in, in the can- in the Canadian Antarctic, no, right? Well, yeah, France actually has a pipeline off of La Hague that is dumping low-level waste that is being pushed by the cu- by the currents uh, all the way up to the Canadian cir- Arctic Circle, which is and they've been sued by several countries in in Europe. Uh, How come and- the World Trade Organization isn't suing about that, Russell? It, I, I'm just confused, man. And, and, In a better world. And, yeah? and finally, something that Republicans can admire about France. <laughs> That's right. You don't usually see them on the side of the French. But, but one thing, I, I would like to ask Arnie, where where do we go from here? Yeah. Where do we go from here in safety? Where is your where is Fairwinds going? I mean, you have a huge amount of experience in the nuclear industry and have, re, and have a, an insight that hardly anybody in the nation has. Right. Well, I, I, um, I'm against building you know, new nukes, right? and I think the 23 that are identical to Fukushima should be shut down. Absolutely. I don't think it's plausible to shut down the other 80 immediately, but right. I think, you know, a deal's a deal. We had a 40-year deal with these guys at the end of 40, that's it, and don't give them another 20. You know, the, and the last piece is, the, if you, the, the people that can, are convinced that nuclear power uh, is viable are going to have you believe that you can store nuclear waste for a million years. That that's that's part of the belief system. You have nuclear we and oh by the way we know we can store nuclear waste for for a million years. Those same people are saying, well we can't do solar because we haven't figured out how to store the electricity overnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, where are the straight jackets, Arnie? <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, it's just on the face of it. Arizona should be the solar capital of the world. I and, mean, and no what's happening there is efficient is energy. Arizona has fallen so far behind right now. It is in the bottom four states for renewable energy right now. It's insane. And hey, we- I, had a, I had an energy company representative standing before the mayor and council about 10 years ago who, when challenged why we didn't have more solar here, mm-hmm. said, actually said, we have too much sun it's it doesn't work when there's too much beyond a certain amount and i i know i thought i was i I thought i was in never never land 
He, of course, has gotten mixed up by the claim that when you increase the temperature, the temperature. your efficiency goes down. But right. the thing is, your efficiency, if you have, say, 110 degrees, goes down a little bit. But because the sun availability of sunlight goes up so much, it, it Compensa- wipes out that it wipes 5%, out 5% percent. several times over. Right. And so, you know, it, yeah, it's just taking, taking in- information and completely contorting it. Right. <laughs> Arnie, uh, anything else? Um, no, I'm, uh, <laughs> no I, I think that, uh, you know, we need to push renewables conservation. Right. If we just behaved like the French, we wouldn't need a new power plant for 40 years because their per capita consumption is low, and the way they structure their rates, the more you use, the more you pay, that, that's an incentive. That's an incentive, sure. absolutely. So, and over think, 70% of their population is against building any new nukes also. Well, it's like de Gaulle said, how can you control a people that have more than 600 cheeses? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knew that there was going to be safety there. How, you, know, you can't lie to a population like that. <laughs> well, Ar- Arnie, thank you very much. Well, thanks for having me. I absolutely, absolutely. Russell, uh, anything else you want to cover? Want to m- mention uh, before we? I would just say people need to really get alert to what's going on with this L. Melvin plan, Atomic L, and, and you know this concurrent memorial SB fifteen forty eight. Uh, was is just an atrocity, uh, and it, they're going to be asking Congress to use Arizona for all the nuclear waste dumping in the United States. People should be up in arms or about this, uh, writing oh, well, their senators, we have a glowing future. meeting with their senators, meeting with their legislators, writing them, and voting them out of office. And, of course, he's doing this because this is how he wants to fund public education. <laughs> right. Now they become concerned about kids, <laughs> only when they can use them as a, as a dumping ground for nuclear waste. He actually has a 0% rating by the Arizona Education Network. <laughs> Zero for voting for ch- for children. Well, for people who believe that education can enhance individuals, for th- that's an admission on their part that he's not he's simply not educable. I mean, you know, this, this guy's a waste of time. So we're gonna we're gonna finish up some business here, Dan. We've got about one more minute. And, uh, oh, before you need, we, we can come we can come back. No, 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 no. I I had it wrong. Um, <laughs> So when does when does uh, Palo Verde? When's the end of its life? Uh, well, Palo Verde uh, has three reactors. The first one went into operation in eighty two, then eighty four, and then eighty six. And they have forty year licenses, but they already got their twenty year licenses extension. And you know, like that would be like designing. Well, let's do it a, while things are good. That would be like <laughs> designing a car to last sixty years. Uh, you know, these things are they they have pipes in all of these reactors that are submerged in moisture and water that weren't designed for that. They have electrical wiring through the through the uh, the cement structures at the base of the plants through the, through the, through the basements essentially, and and these plants weren't designed for it. As these plants get older. There, the chance of meltdowns, the chance of huge radio, radiological releases goes up dramatically. And this is going to become a more common uh, occurrence. You know, first we had, uh, well, the, the reactor in L.A., and we had a number of other reactors, including th- three, three Mile Island. We had Chernobyl. We had Fukushima. Things are going to start happening quicker and quicker. Oh yeah, and, and that's the, an awful thought. The CO two costs from uh, from rebuilding cities, from rebuilding natural habitats, the CO two emissions are going to be are going to be higher than that of coal per kilowatt hour. Nuclear has a huge life cycle, so to say, that emits a lot of CO2. So if they, if they stop, I think Palo Verde pays like a third of all the property taxes in Maricopa County. Mm, so if know. they ever stop it, that means everybody's property taxes are going to go up a, a, a whole bunch, which is the least of it. It's the least of it. Well, you would replace that with solar and other things that would right. increase the value and bring in property taxes also. Right. So I don't think that's really that much of an issue. No. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Arnie. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks. Be back next week.